All right, so now we're ready to make a few design revisions. So what we want to do is take a look at this in SketchUp and begin uh, modeling. And, and this is where you're really going to see how uh, the construction documents are a product of the 3D model, which is much more in line with the way our brains work. It's much easier to design in 3D and have your construction documents automatically created rather than the other way around of creating construction documents and then having the 3D model be a, a product of those, those 2D drawings. So uh, what I'm going to do is set this up, uh, unlock my viewport layer, right click on a viewport and choose open with SketchUp. So that's going to automatically launch that SketchUp model. It makes it very easy to, to find your links if, and, uh, and, and open them and edit them. So we're going to wait just a moment for that to open and here it comes and then I'm going to organize my screen if I just drag this over to the left and then drag my um, my layout window over to the right and then my tray on the the Windows version I can auto hide my tray I'm going to do that right now just because it makes it a lot easier to see what's happening on my screen and then over here my my keyboard shortcut is control D and that's going to hide uh, all of my dialogues. All right, so now what I need to do is uh, let me just look at the SketchUp model. We're on auto render, so we're good to go there. And uh, what I'm going to do is let's just add a window. So I would just go in here and I'm going to cut out, uh, let's see, three feet off that wall and then maybe another three feet. And then I'll just set up my guidelines. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I just tend to use guidelines a lot. And we'll punch a hole in there and control E wipes them out and then I can take a window so here's where the benefit of this model organization system comes in is that I don't have to think about what layer this is going on because it's part of a group and that group is on the windows layer so every window that I add in here is automatically on the correct layer just like with anything else so once you set up your model and set up your layering um, you, you really don't have to worry about it again Okay, so we, we made one quick change here. I'm going to go to File and choose Save. And then over here in Layout, I can go to, um, I can just right click on a viewport and choose Update Reference. And then render our models. And now look what happens here. So we have our new window. So again, dynamic hatch. Any hatch pattern you want uh, is, is very easily linked. All right, so now, like, what if we want to extend uh, we'll, we'll just extend the the kitchen and bathroom out so now here's one shortcoming of this system is that if I were to move this wall and I gotta be aware of what I'm grabbing and moving I'm gonna move this by like three feet and then if I come back out here I'm gonna have to adjust all of these different pieces so in the future it'd be nice to see more um, uh, connected objects, I suppose, uh, parametric modeling. So uh, that is one downfall is that I have to manually go in and move this stuff back into place. But really, once you get quick with the tools, it really does not take long at all. And it's not a it's not a a, a hard mistake to catch because if something is not in the right place, it's going to be very obvious that it's not. So let's um, and you can use all kinds of different tools. I'll use the scale tool for that. And we probably still have our ceilings here as well. And we'll stretch those over. So uh, typically, you, know, you could hold off on creating your ceilings or creating your floors until you get the whole design done, whatever, whatever makes sense. So we've moved our walls. And then um, let me just go to File and choose Save. And you know, actually, let's just add a door over here. So we'll do that again. And this time, I'm going to go, I'll just make a copy of this over to here and now these doors I don't I don't want them to each have to each be on the doors layer I want everything to be on layer 0 and then I make these a group and I put that group on the layer doors that way everything I do in here is on the correct layer alright so I need to adjust this door so I'm gonna first make it unique and then we'll just um, slide this over and then we're going to uh, let's just delete this out of the middle and pull this across and then we want to scoot this back by let's just say two inches 
and then our um, our 2D graphic needs some adjustment too. So for this, uh, you could it would probably be easiest just to to redraw that circle. And to do that, I would just go over here and draw my circle over to there. Hide this, and then just recreate that that graphic. There we go. So that's pretty clean for now. Okay, so now that is already on the correct layer because we were, we were working within an existing component. All right, so now we can hide the uh, unhide everything and click on File and choose Save. And now over here, I can just right click and choose Update Reference, and then we can render the models. And there, everything falls into place. Now what's happening here is our viewports just need to be pulled out a touch. All right, so now we've got our, our updated plan. So you can start to see how that dynamic link is very important. We've got all of our line weights controlled. We've got our vector line work. We've got um, our, our hatches. Our hatch patterns are admittedly raster images, but uh, they do repeat and they do render very clean. So let's take a look at how that, that does end up looking here. We'll go to our paper and we can set this to a high quality and just take a look at um, it takes longer to render but you can see there how how much more it cleans up and then we set this at 100 percent you'll, you'll never know the difference between uh, between vector and roster once you've exported your PDF and rendered that so I'm gonna go to file and choose save all right, so now we've we've di demonstrated this dynamic link, and let's take a look at our other. We we looked at our plan, but now everything in our elevations uh, we can render these models, and we're probably going to see that jump out. There you go, and then we have our interior view, and this is already rendered, so you can see our door is already set up. So uh, that gives you an idea of how you can. Uh, produce your construction documents as a product of a 3D model. So in the next video, in the, the last and final video, I'm going to walk through some of the annotation tools and scrapbooks and show you how this all comes together and uh, we'll wrap it up there.